Hello and welcome to the painting log for the month of March. A bit shorter than other months because I didn't actually paint a huge amount this month. The plan was to paint my Tyranid Demacheron and my Flyrant, both of which are large models and so would require some sort of special assembly. So with that in mind, I bought some brass rods from Green Stuff World along with some other hobby supplies. However, because Brexit, that shipment was stuck in a warehouse in Oldham for three weeks and then was sent back to Spain. So I guess we're kind of back to step one. Step one. So I had to change up my painting plans. So the sum total of my painting this month is a bunch of orcs. Nowhere near as many as I wanted to do. I kind of got sidetracked by the other project that I did this month. And this now represents all of the orc boys that are going to be based on 40k orc boys. So that just leaves some Age of Sigmar orcs to round out the second squad of 30. And I also assembled the five orc surfers that are going to go into the biker unit. I'm going to go in and sculpt some extra detail like lays and sunglasses and milliput. I just haven't got around to doing that yet. But the main thing that I painted this month and spent a large amount of time on was this Mandalorian. So I got him as a 3D print from eBay. I'll include a link in the description if you'd like to get one yourself. This isn't sponsored, but you know, paying it forwards. And from the moment I saw the print, I knew that I wanted to do this as non-metallic metals, but a specific kind of non-metallic metals called Sky and Earth NMM, which is basically painted reflections where you put your character in the environment that you want them to be in. In my case, that's a desert with bright blue sky and then trying to paint the reflections on the metallic materials so for him the armor i can safely say that this was the most technically difficult thing i have ever painted because the technique basically is ray tracing in your head so you had to pick a perspective and then work out where the sun was going to be relative to that perspective and where it was going to be reflecting and as well obviously where the ground is going to be reflecting compared to where the sky is going to be reflected i was helped in this by the wonderful cast from my community who sent me a blender file that I initially used as a reference to try and work out uh, where the sky would be and where the ground would be. But while I took some tips from that file, I actually ended up doing it mostly just sort of by eye, basically working out what angle the piece of armor would have to be at for it to reflect the sky and what it would have to be to reflect the earth. I started out by doing one of the greaves on his leg and actually had to redo that because it turned out that I'd picked probably the most difficult piece of armor to start off with. The bit that actually really brought the whole thing together was one of his pauldrons on his shoulders. Because it's basically just a sphere, just a section of a sphere, and the kitty with NMM, as far as I can tell, is to break down your model into basic geometries, so spheres, planes, cubes, all that kind of thing. And being a simpler geometry, that meant that you could quite easily work out what would reflect what? Perhaps I was wrong in saying about the greave before. I think the helmet was probably the most technically difficult bit, but that's just because of the shape of the helmet. You have these weird kind of cheekbone-esque bits of armour that, that I had to wrap my head around how it would reflect the sky and the ground. I'm not completely happy with it, but it's pretty good. Overall, the paint job is not perfect. It's definitely done layered rather than glazed, and so you can see some pretty obvious transitions in some places. But for my first attempt at this technique, I am really, really happy with it. I should say something about the rest of the model because there's a lot of details on here although actually if you look at the Mandalorian costume a lot of it's quite boring a lot of it's just kind of leather and brown and his gun is seriously boring to look at but there are a couple of other interesting details on here like the cape having a nice smooth transition the fact that the model is about 70 millimeters tall so a lot taller than your average Warhammer model definitely makes that a lot easier and I'm also very happy with the baby Yoda that he's carrying I mix the skin tone just by eye a mix of Warboss green with some gray sear and I think a touch of the fang in there as well just to kind of desaturate it a bit further he is of course incredibly cute and yeah I think if that was a model on its own I'd be very happy with him Painting something on this scale has definitely been more forgiving than a Warhammer scale, and I'd be very interested to paint something like a bust in the future or another large scale model, because it is a great chance to hone techniques without having to worry about doing it at the smallest scale possible. This coming month, the plan is to finish off the rest of the Orc boys. There's only 10 of them that I need to do now in order to finish off the two big mobs of 30 boys each. And then it's kind of up to whether that shipment arrives from Green Stuff World or not, because I'd like to do those surfers, and I'd like to do the two big Tyranid Griblies. Whether or not I do is... Eh. If that doesn't work out, of course, I have other things in my grey pile of shame. I have, admittedly, at some point, got to finish off that Indomitus box. Thank you for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed or found instructive me going through the Mandalorian paint job, and I will see you next month.